All right, well, we are uh, super excited to be heading back to the uh, Orange Bowl. Uh, we've got uh, a team that's excited, uh, really proud of our guys and how they how they finished the season. Um, and, uh, you know, to have the opportunity to play in this game is something that, you know, you really dream of. Um, and uh, especially here at Clemson, you know, we, we took 30 years to get back there uh, when we got there in 11 and, and now to be able to get back there for the fourth time in 12 years. Um, I'm thankful that this team is going to get that experience and our staff because it is a, it is a, an iconic, uh, you know, bowl experience and, um, you know, one that uh, I know everyone will, will enjoy being a part of. You know, Eric Palms and, and the entire Orange Bowl uh, staff uh, they do an amazing job, as does everybody that's affiliated uh, with this bowl. So, and then uh, you throw in the fact that you get a chance to compete <laughs> against a, a team like Tennessee uh, that that may may you know be the best team in the country this year. Uh, you know, they they are one of those teams that certainly uh, you know can play with anybody, and they showed that all year. Uh, and uh, so, it's a great matchup. And I know both teams, both fan bases. So we're super excited uh, to, to see these teams compete on the field. But we're thankful uh, for the opportunity. And, again, really proud of our team for how they competed and, and to win this ACC championship and uh, earn the right to get back to the Orange Bowl in New Year's Six. So, uh, you know, with that, uh, I'll take your questions along with just, you know, say congratulations to Coach uh, Heupel and, um, and Tennessee for them earning the right to be here as well. The job that they uh, – you know, did this year was amazing. Got a chance to see him quite a bit, um, and um, it'll be a great matchup. All right, thank you, Coach. Now we're going to open it up for questions. Again, to ask a question, please raise your hand using the raise hand function on your Zoom screen. I'll call upon you. Please unmute yourself. State your name and your affiliation before asking your question. So we are going to start with Tim Reynolds. Go ahead, Tim. Thank you. Hi, Dabo. Congratulations. Uh, Tim Reynolds with the AP here in Miami. I, we all know the times we're in in college football, and we're going to see obviously a lot of kids opting out from around the country from the bowl games and whatnot. What what do you do to convince your kids that? I mean, you have always spoken very highly of this game. What do you do to convince your kids that this the opportunity to play in a game like this doesn't come along every day, and that should sort of enter into their to their thinking too a little bit sometimes. Well, I mean, we just you know. Uh... It's an opportunity to play, first of all, and, uh, and not only play, but again, to have uh, an experience that is really special. Uh, it really is. I mean, again, um, I, I got to go to the Orange Bowl in 1999 when I was coaching at Alabama. In fact, it was Tom Brady's uh, last game and, uh, at Michigan there. So that was a, a special. It was turning uh, 2000. That was the, the Y2K days. Uh, so that was an unbelievable experience for me as a young coach and then obviously uh, to get back a few times here at Clemson and to, to know those memories that have been built, uh, you know, throughout our teams over the years. So, you know, you, you share those things and, and all that, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, I mean, I don't think you really should have to convince someone at the end of the day, you know, if somebody doesn't want to play, it, 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 you respect their decision to keep moving. All right, next we're going to go over to Trevor Groves. Go ahead, Trevor. Hey, Coach. Uh, look, looks like you're on the plane on your way out to recruit, so thanks for doing this. Um, but uh, two-part question, um, I guess you got a, got a head start on uh, your preparation for Tennessee uh, as you prepared for the Gamecocks. Uh, just wondering what you were able to glean from, from watching the film on them. Uh, and also, uh, your last meeting against Tennessee was in the 2003 Peach Bowl. Uh, your first staff, your first year on staff at Clemson. Uh, what do you remember about that night? Well, I, I remember, uh, you know, first of all, it was a great finish to our season. We went from five and four uh, to uh, probably getting ready to be shown the door uh, to nine and four. And Coach Bowden got coach of the year. And, uh, I, you know, I got to, I got to, uh, you know, <laughs> I got to stay at Clemson longer than, than uh, 10 months or whatever. So uh, I remember that very well. It was a great finish to our season, uh, the way we finished. And uh, I remember Tennessee was a very good team, a very talented team. 
And uh, but we were really playing our best ball there. Charlie Whitehurst was was hot. The receivers and Chad Jasmine, I think, was the MVP of that game. Uh, and uh, so it was just a, a an electric atmosphere in the in the Peach Bowl there. And, uh, you know, a fun a fun way to finish the year. It was a big win for us. It was a huge win uh, for sure because Tennessee, I think, was a, a highly ranked team, maybe a top ten team uh, in that game. But uh, so. You know, it was, it was special because, again, uh, you know, it was a good way to, to start off uh, you know, my first year there at Clemson, uh, going on, I guess, 20 years ago now. So uh, that's what I remember. All right, next we're going to go over to Jason Parker. Go ahead, Jason. Coach Jason Parker, NBC6 in Miami. Two-part question for you. Number one, you talked a little bit about your history, both at Alabama and Clemson, with playing in the Orange Bowl. Talk about what you're going to tell – your players and those guys who haven't experienced this Orange Bowl about the history of this game and what it means to be able to be a part of this game. And the second part of the question, there was there was a time just a couple weeks ago when you guys looked like a possible playoff team. How do you respond to maybe some of the fans or some of the people who may not be as hyped up about coming to a non-playoff game? Well, uh, well, first of all, the history of the Orange Bowl is. Uh, is amazing. I mean, some of the greatest games ever in college football have taken place at the Orange Bowl. And, um, you know, it's it's a big-time uh, experience. It's a big-time bowl. And then uh, as, far as, as far as all part of your question, I mean, uh, both of these teams are playoff teams, caliber teams. You know, there's there's four spots, and it's, it's really, really hard to be in the final four. Um, you know, we're fortunate we've been there. Uh, a few times and I've had some success there, but it's really hard, and, you know, and, and you know what, you don't control that. Um, you could technically, you know, you could have the same record as someone else and someone not put you in there. So I think the biggest thing is, is um, if, if, if 11 and two and being your league champion and going to the orange bowl, uh, <laughs> if you're not happy with that, I don't really know what to say to you. Uh, it's really hard to win. And uh, man, the players and the staff work extremely hard. Uh, there's not many teams out there that have 10 plus wins, you know, Tennessee and the season they've had unbelievable. And then for our team as well, but both of these teams, um, were, you know, even though we're not in the final four, we're both uh, teams that certainly for you know, 12 to 13 weeks were one of those few teams that had the opportunity. And, um, you know, we both had opportunities to kind of play our way in there. We didn't get that done, but you got to give the opponent credit. And, uh, you know, and again, that's that's football. Uh, but both teams had an amazing season and this will be an exciting opportunity to finish our year again with a playoff caliber game. That's that's what this is. And and, um, you know, next year's one more year, of the final four, and then it's going to 12. So I think this is a, a great experience uh, for our team, uh, the staff, uh, both teams and uh and then also for our fans, uh, this is it's Miami. It's the Orange Bowl. Uh, you're playing Tennessee. Uh, I think it's uh, anytime you get a chance, if you're a fan of your team, and anytime you get a chance to see them play, to me it ought to be exciting. We don't we don't get um, at most if the whole world goes perfect, we get 15 games, right? 15 days uh, to play this game or to be a fan of your team on the field that day. And um, you know we're fortunate we're going to have. 14. And so I'm thankful we got one more game to play. Hopefully uh, we'll have a great crowd. I don't doubt that we will. And a great environment. Uh, two regional fan bases that I'm sure will will passionately support each team. All right, next we're going to go over to Dan Harrelson. Go ahead, Dan. Hey, Coach. You mentioned uh, two previous games there, uh, 2003, or I guess it may have been the 04 in January against Tennessee in the Peach Bowl. Did you have any input on the fumble Ruski? And then going back to the 2000 <laughs> Orange Bowl, Andrew Zow is your quarterback, obviously, with your program for his second year. How special is it to have him part of your program now? Yeah, uh, yeah I believe that was, uh, that was Brad, Brad Scott there that uh, who was our offensive coordinator. And, yeah, we had that little play. I think it was Kyle Browning, little number 28, uh, that uh, we handed that ball to and, you know, everybody kind of comes out and put it under his legs and run out and goes out the back door. That was a 
that was a great play in that game. And uh, I know we hit the trap a couple times with Chad Jasmine. He had a heck of a game. And Derek Hamilton and some of those guys, receivers, uh, Kevin Youngblood had a nice game. Young, t- uh, the head coach at Virginia now, Tony Elliott, uh, was playing in that game. So there was a lot of good, uh, great moments uh, for sure. And uh, yeah, we were talking. I was talking about that with Andrew Zal the other day. You know, uh, you know, you just it, when you're in the moment of things, you don't really know. And I just remember that game, and, and we have the lead, and there's like a minute something left, and you know, there's this long, gangly guy out there, at quarterback for Michigan, and you think, well, you know pretty good shape here you know, uh, and all of a sudden this guy Tom Brady takes him right down the field ties it up and we go to overtime and uh, we missed the extra point in overtime uh, that's how we lost that game so I won't ever forget that either but uh, and then you know you go on about your business and next thing you know 60 years later Tom Brady is is, is still doing that <laughs> and uh, making a living doing it all right, we got time for one or two more questions. Let's go over to Mitchell Summers. Go ahead, Mitchell. Hey, Coach Sweeney, this is Mitchell Summers with Fox Carolina. So what do you expect to see out of Kate Klubnick in a top seven matchup in the Orange Bowl in his first career start at quarterback? Well, hopefully just, uh, you know, first of all, great preparation like he's been having, but then just, you know, playing within the system and, uh, you know, just being smart with the ball and, and just, you know, doing what he's coached to do. And I thought he did an amazing job of that uh, last night. And, uh, you know, so really just hopefully pick up where he left off. But he was he was accurate, made good decisions outside of maybe one or two in the run game. Uh, he extended some plays, uh, did some things with his legs. So uh, just continue to, again, you know, you know, play within the system, uh, you know, bring, bring that great energy and uh, protect the football. All right, our last question for Coach is from Trevor Groves. Go ahead, Trevor. Hey, Coach, just curious what you saw from Tennessee um, in, in preparing for the Gamecocks. Um, ob- obviously, Hendon Hooker, you know, went out in that game, unfortunately. But um, just just your impressions of uh, of their offense, defense, and, and schematically. Yeah, well, not just the Gamecocks. I mean, I got to see them a few several times this year, and – I mean, they're, inc- I mean, they're unbelievable. Uh, I mean, it's, I mean, they, I, I don't, I haven't obviously, you know, uh, got into, you know, really breaking them down and game planning, and, but I, I would imagine that they, they got to lead the country in scoring or offense. Uh, I can't imagine they don't. I mean, uh, as explosive an offense as I've seen in a long, long time. Uh, unbelievable tempo, incredibly fast. Receivers making plays. Um, I mean, this is a this is a, a team that you can tell just has fun playing. Uh, you can tell that they're very connected. That you know, Coach Heupel and his staff they've done an unbelievable job of of, of building uh, you know this culture and really putting it together right out of the gate. Uh, that's it's not easy to do, and um, you know so. And I know they, they missed some plays against South Carolina, and South Carolina hit some some uh, amazing plays. And, um, but, man, they bounced right back the very next week, got back on track, and, uh, you know, shut out Vanderbilt, scored a million points and a bunch of yards. So, uh, you know, there, there'll be a handful for sure. I'm, I'm glad we don't play them this week. Uh, hopefully we can find a way to make them punt a couple times. Um, because they, they, they don't punt very often. 